nitrous oxide nitrous oxide nitrous oxide nitrous oxide you need to know about nitrous oxide well this video is all about nitrous oxide when you get that medical nitrous that that is like the champagne of beer there is a new drug on the scene well I guess an old drug packaged in a new way. Well, a new warning tonight about an old way to get high that's now gone viral. When is galaxy gas? <laughs> like from, from Neptune? Uranus, Saturn, Mars, what galaxy? Galaxy gas, which is basically whippets or laughing gas that is having a resurgence amongst the young population. Nitrous oxide is typically used in a medical setting as a mild sedative and analgesic during childbirth, in the emergency room, and most commonly in dental offices. However, it's finding its way into the hands of teenagers looking for a quick, and I do mean only a few minutes quick, high. It only lasts like 20, 30 seconds. It'd be the best thing to get pulled over doing. If you've been doing nitrous and you're like, oh, yeah, a little bit, but what are you gonna do about it? Because now it's over. Yeah. <laughs> hey interns, I'm Dr. Chris Rayner, orthopedic surgeon, and today we're talking about whippets. It only um, lasts 20, 30 seconds, or as long as you keep inhaling it. <laughs> This drug has been used recreationally for a while, but what is unique about Galaxy Gas is that it comes in these colorful, flavorful, portable canisters that are relatively cheap, can easily fit into a backpack, and are jam-packed with enough nitrous oxide to give an enormous amount of hits, like a whole crap ton. <laughs> How is it legal, you may ask? Well, nitrous oxide has a few other official uses worth mentioning. This colorless, odorless gas is non-flammable, but although it doesn't catch fire itself, it can support combustion just like oxygen, making it quite useful in other areas besides medicine. But people discovered that not only it gives you like a very interesting kind of high, but it also speeds up your car. It is using the automotive industry and racing to boost engine performance. In the industrial industry, to help with manufacturing processes, and this one's important for our story, in the food industry as a propellant in whipped cream dispensers. So it's very easily accessible. Technically, Galaxy gas tanks are marketed as culinary supplies, fuel for whipped cream, but this isn't what they're being used for and the inventors know that. So what we have now is another drug threat sweeping through the neighborhoods, trending on TikTok, being promoted by mainstream celebs that is, for the most part, completely unregulated. Come on man, please bro, please. I'm not addicted, bro. Many people think it's harmless, but that's where they'd be wrong. It can pose serious health risks, particularly potentially permanent nerve damage, and more, which we'll get to today. In this video, we'll discuss how nitrous oxide works physiologically within our body, its side effects, and its addictive potential, why laughing gas is making a comeback, and galaxy gas's unique contribution to this issue. Let's start with a brief history, shall we? For the the exact number of centuries that it's been used, it's also been abused. Nitrous oxide was first discovered by British scientist Humphrey Davy while experimenting on himself and friends. And though he recognized its analgesic effects and potential use for pain relief during medical procedures, he then thought, nah, and instead decided to use it for entertainment value at carnivals, medical exhibitions, and at parties. They call it laughing gas. I provided it for entertainment in society parties. It's good money. In fact, it wasn't used in medicine until 50 years after its initial discovery when dentist Horace Wells demonstrated its effectiveness during a tooth extraction in the early 1840s. This was a huge contribution in the field of dentistry then for the centuries to follow and remains something we use today to calm patients' nerves and to take the edge off. In modern day, dentist Greg Phillips notes that approximately 20 to 30% of people feel that they need nitrous oxide during their appointments. However, he also notes that medical use of the gas requires proper training for the administrator. 14 hours of didactic or academic learning plus six hours of doing cases to get yourself a personal nitrous permit. In many places, dentists must have an official permit from the State Board of Dentistry to administer nitrous oxide to patients, ensuring that it's used safely and appropriately for sedation during procedures. Phillips explains that they also need to document who uses it and for how long. In contrast, nitrous oxide is far less regulated for non-medicinal use, such as in culinary applications. Since chefs use it in a way that doesn't involve inhaling it directly, the 
government must assume there's less risk involved, making it easier to obtain. But as we know, there are many people inhaling it. But why? What exactly does it do? While nearly every tank we saw has a warning against inhaling the gas somewhere on the tank, addicts say that's just a loophole in the law. I don't really know what you can even do with these other than suck them down. Hey, yo! Nitrous oxide has some notable psychoactive effects. In particular, it's anesthetic, hallucinogenic, and euphoric effects. These are a result of nitrous oxide being what's known as a dissociative compound, similar to ketamine and PCP. NMDA receptors allow for electrical signals to pass between neurons in the brain and spinal column. Exactly, but what this nitrous oxide does is it closes these receptors so the signal can't pass. So it interferes with the nervous system's ability to effectively communicate between the brain and the body. You know, the really important process that most, if not all, bodily functions rely on. The disconnection of neurons leads to loss of feeling, difficulty moving, and even the famous hole. You can pass out, I've done it. Sounds fun. This loss of feeling also means loss of pain. And decreased sensitivity to pain means more comfort, which provides users with a brief euphoric Hi. He's good. Nitrous. In their article on the neurotoxicity of nitrous oxide, Sinead Savage and Daking Ma explained that it also modulates a broad range of other receptors, such as GABA receptors, which are crucial for inhibitory neurotransmission in the brain, meaning they help calm neuronal activity. It's thought that when nitrous oxide binds to these receptors, it increases the flow of chloride ions into the neurons, making them less likely to fire. Another article on the advances in understanding the actions of nitrous oxide explains that it also helps relieve pain by encouraging the release of natural opioids in the brain, which then activate opioid receptors and again affect pain processing in the spinal cord. You get uh, a buzzing in your ears, you hear a noise, you start seeing these slight pinwheels and you feel a little wonky. Some people giggle, like all of a sudden you just feel a little bit better, more comfortable. If you're going through some trauma, all of a sudden it lessens and you're like, oh, this is easier to handle. It makes life just a little bit easier to handle. So in short, it gets you high. And I think the term in short fits nicely here because that's what this high is. Very, very, very short. In total, it lasts less than five minutes with the onset, come up, and peak being a whopping one minute or so of that, and the rest being come down. But by no means is this a very intense drug, and it's very short-lived. That's why people just do them one after the other after the other, and if you're after just some relief, you gotta just keep doing them, so it's pretty freaking time consuming. And that's how the seemingly mild sedative has people caught up chasing a high. Before getting into the side effects, it's important to highlight that what started off as a occasional party drug has made its way into the everyday lives of young people, largely due to the introduction of products like galaxy gas. Almost 10 years ago, whippets were super popular in the UK, coming in second only to cannabis. It was predominantly used to wrap up a night out. A dealer would come by either to a party or on the street outside the clubs with a relatively large <laughs> canister of nitrous oxide and sell individual balloons. Balloons are used because the gas itself can be quite cold and uncomfortable to inhale directly. So the balloons tend to warm it up and make it more palatable. Sadly, people selling nitrous oxide balloons outside music venues has just become part of this scene that no one asked for. This drug market was getting out of hand, not only because of its widespread use, but because of how it was being distributed. That is, through street dealers who'd frequently steal nitrous tanks from medical facilities in order to make a healthy profit. We needed the f***ing crowbar, bolt cutters, bulls. You got our bollocks. This forced the UK government to intervene, and in 2016, they brought forth the Psychoactive Substances Act. Legislation made it illegal to supply nitrous oxide for recreational use. Though, this really didn't do much to stop people from using it, but it meant that dealers had to be sneakier, even still, about how they distributed it. Usage may not have actually been that problematic. Hear me out for a second. Now, we must keep it in mind that when it comes to drugs like nitrous oxide, which have really short half-lives and quickly leave the body, they often don't show up on drug tests. And this means that information about their use largely depends on whether individuals admit to using them. But 
In a 2015 review of recreational use in the UK, during the peak of the laughing gas trend, users were surprisingly open about their habits. However, the review also notes that recreational use was generally moderate, with users taking less than 10 balloons per episode and about 80% of users having less than 10 episodes a year, which is pretty infrequent and nowhere near addiction territory. However, the government still decided to crack down and as a doctor, I can agree with the sentiment that it should not be used recreationally whatsoever. And with these new barriers to usage, we saw whippets kind of go away for a while or at least move more underground. But dealers would still sell, they just cover their tracks by basically baiting people into saying, it's for culinary use, bro. And did they actually say, oh, this is for whipped cream? They said, yeah, just for cream. So what they do with it after is completely down to them, really. We've got cakes to deliver. Hello. We're pastry chefs. <laughs> <laughs> is the Psychoactive Substances Act just a big joke? It's not necessarily a joke, but it's funny. Users themselves could still pretend to be chefs and buy whipped cream canisters online or in cooking shops or from a dealer. But even doing so, the products didn't look like they do now. He says he's used nitrous oxide recreationally for more than a decade, but he says it's only recently that his abuse of the gas became a problem. When nitrous tanks like these showed up, you can make approximately 22,792 servings of whipped cream. It's preposterous. And they usually only cost around 30 to $50, depending on the retailer and location. So for that price, people can literally keep doing whip it after whip it if they want. All of them use the same stupid loophole of like, ooh, we're just wanting to sell whipped cream flavored chargers. He explained that by using this legal loophole, companies like Galaxy Gas have managed to bypass the law and basically sell legally and illegal high. There are brothers, Amor, Sammy, Ben, and Kareem. They run something called SBK International, and they're the owners of Cloud9 in Georgia. You can check out Voidzilla's video for details on the questionable business practices of the owners. But to summarize, the same brothers registered as owners of a vape shop also own Galaxy Gas, but prefer not to be the public face of the brand for <laughs> obvious reasons. While one might think they simply run a culinary supply company alongside a smoke shop, the situation gets more suspicious. A few days ago, a couple weeks ago, they terminated uh, their company. For now, these products are still easily accessible. On shelves at corner stores and smoke shops. You're spending all your money. Sometimes offered with a complimentary mouthpiece. None of the shops check his age nor do they ask what it's for. The video goes on to show that the cashier even asked if he wanted balloons to go with his purchase, basically saying, yo, I know what you're using this for, bro. You gotta hit it one time, bro. <laughs> just one time for the camera, bro. You gotta hit it one time. Just tilt it to the side or what? This it's no big deal behavior glamorizes it and makes people, especially young impressionable teens, overlook the risks associated with it. Kind of seeing someone right now, so they, they do it. So I was like, you know what, I'll try it out with you, you know? Permanent oh, nerve damage. Have a seizure. Bro. Bro, please. Have a seizure. Come Come on, permanent seizure. nerve damage and even death. Oh. Seizure salad. But seizures can happen though, and death. In fact, Whippets can have many fatal and life altering consequences, especially at the higher doses we're seeing recently. Let's start with the short term effects. Suffocation. <laughs> yup. Nitrous oxide can displace oxygen in the bloodstream, which can lead to asphyxia, as well as respiratory and cardiac issues if inhaled in closed spaces or in excessive amounts. The main health consequences of nitrous oxide that is both short and long term is that it is neurotoxic, meaning it can damage the nervous system. On top of that, it disrupts the body's metabolism of vitamin B12, ultimately leading to high levels of homocysteine. Homocysteine is an amino acid that the body produces when it breaks down another amino acid called methionine. And B12 is supposed to convert homocysteine back into methionine, which is important for various bodily functions, including protein production and maintaining nerve health. But it can't do that, and elevated levels of homocysteine can pose issues. As Sinead Savage and Daking Ma explain in their article, research shows that nitrous oxide used during surgery can even lead to heart problems afterward because of this. Other symptoms caused by the neurotoxic effects of whippets include a tingling sensation, tiredness, 
weakness in the legs, slurred screech, lack of balance or coordination, nausea and vomiting, and blurry vision. Talk about disorienting. Long-term effects are basically the same except without needing the drug anymore to induce the symptoms. Add on to that the obvious, vitamin B12 deficiency, plus anemia, skin problems, immune disorders, and mental health issues, as well as permanent brain damage and nerve damage otherwise known as neuropathy. And to, to having problems with, with mu muscle pains and difficulty walking to the point where people sometimes become bed bound. In a Sky News video, a young man named Musa expresses regret about using whippets, reflecting on how he never imagined his life would be this way at just 20 years old. Musa spends most of his day in bed. His body shakes, his vision is blurred. I remember waking up and getting out the bed and I just ended up collapsing and I didn't, couldn't feel my body. Letitia Holder, who became paralyzed after three years of nitrous oxide use, is now undergoing extensive physical therapy at Sinai Grace Hospital in hopes of walking again. You may think, why not stop then? Well, for many, it's not that simple. Even without the physical symptoms presenting themselves, people can develop psychological dependence. And when it gets to that point, yeah, I would say it's dangerous on a, well, just emotional level. One of the main indicators of addiction is the inability to stop when it presents problems, either physical, mentally, or social. And they often use it in risky situations, such as driving under the influence. When a friend of his daughter's hopped out of his truck with a nitrous tank in hand and crashed head first into his family's mailbox. And I just want to embrace the other people in the world that they need to stop doing them and it's not for a human's body. They are addictive. Regardless of what the research shows, especially because use in this casual and excessive type of way is fairly new and understudied, there are real people who are experiencing the addictive potential of whippets firsthand. She's doing really bad. She's been in rehab three times. We calculated, this is $1,800 worth of product right here in a three week time. Addiction takes a toll on not just the addict and their entire support system, both mentally and physically, but also financially as well. And what started off as a cheap and harmless drug can end up being a costly habit to kick. I know users that can, that'll spend a thousand dollars in a day. In conclusion, whippets, especially in this new form, can take from you time and money and your health, ultimately robbing yourself of real happiness in the process and all of that for what? A quick laugh? If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave us a comment and give it a big thumbs up to feed the algorithm. If this is your first time to the channel, welcome. We are on our way to over 700,000 subs and we would love to have you with us when we get there. If you didn't like the video, that's okay, but be sure to let me know why in the comment section down below. I read as many comments as I can and we use your feedback to make our videos better for you. Don't forget to follow my gym, Human 2.0 Fitness, for free right here on YouTube where we post content that helps you move better and prevent injury. Or its sister channel, Human at Home, where you can learn how to be healthy where you live. Otherwise, as always, that's been a word from Dr. Chris, not your everyday ortho, where we see one, do one, teach one.